Bill, in promoting intelligent design, one of the problems that you have to deal with is the so-called sub-optimization of the world. I mean, anybody can see that. Whether you're talking about uh, molar teeth that our jaws seem to be too small to, to encompass, or more seriously, the problem of evil in the world. Uh, how do you deal with the problem of evil, particularly as a Christian who has been very well schooled in philosophy and mathematics and, and understand the, 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 the rigor of, of, of making coherent arguments. Right. Well, you know, I, I come at this, uh, my, trying to develop intelligent design as a scientific program, and in the sense I try to set the problem of evil aside when I deal with that. Uh, intelligent design, the reason for that adjective intelligent in front of design is as it were to emphasize that the design there is real because so much of design is a term that's used in biology apparent. but it's but it's meant it's meant to be apparent design so in a sense it's it's not redundant in, because it's it's emphasizing that the that there is a real intelligence but once you say that i mean you're not offering any value judgment about well is that design good morally right optimal that becomes a further question uh, but it, it becomes an important question to people because you look at the world and you see uh, all sorts of what seem not just suboptimal design, but even malevolent design. Mm -hmm. When you think of parasites, I mean, the sorts of things, I mean, they seem wonderfully designed to do a number on, uh, on certain organisms. I mean, Darwin looked at the ichneumonidae wasp, and, which paralyzed the caterpillar, put its eggs in there, and then the, the eggs hatch and feed on the caterpillar, but don't knock out any vital organs until right at the end, so it has a ready food source. I mean, he saw this as monstrous. So how do you get, you know, how do you account for all that evil? And then what's the nature of this, uh, uh, you know, this designer then that this seems to design a world where such evil exists? Now, I think one move that's made, uh, and I think one appeal of evolutionary theory is that it's supposed to get around this problem. In a sense, even if, if God creates a world in which evolution brings about such things, well, evolution is a messy process and it'll bring about such things like this. But I, I so think that God's that, not responsible. God, so God's to speak. not responsible. I mean, you see that uh, Francisco Ayala's latest book, uh, Darwin's Gift to Science and, and Religion. He make he makes exactly that point. But it seems to me that it doesn't get around the problem because a God who sets up a world in which these evil happens, it seems that he still has to take uh, responsibility for it. I mean, I, in my review of Ayala's book, I say you know it's one thing you know if a mugger attacks you directly or if a mugger has a vicious guard dog that he allows to attack you, you know. The mugger is still responsible in either case, you know. So I, I don't, I don't see evolution as letting God get off scot free. And in fact, what you often find then is that uh, people who look to evolution to solve the theodicy problem usually they're they're going well beyond that. They're actually tinkering uh, or fundamentally reconceiving the nature of God. I mean, often you go with a process God who's then somehow subservient to nature in some way, but not uh, not a God who's responsible who can take sovereign responsibility for the whole show. So in that solution, what you're doing, your you're, you're theodicy, you're solving the problem of evil by uh, diminishing God's, uh, uh, some of his characteristics yeah, like God's, omnipotence. God's, God's power. I mean, you know, the, the classical problem of evil is God is good, God is all-powerful, uh, all, all powerful, whence evil. You know, I mean, right. how, how do you reconcile those, those three? And so you can you can go, you, you can know, diminish, you can diminish one, one of, or the other. Yeah, right. the, the, the challenge is to maintain yeah. right. God's goodness and omnipotence. Now, how do you is, do that? How do, how do I do that? Uh, well, I think uh, it used to not be a big problem uh, for theology. I mean, it was uh, basically it was a, what you might call a, a version of the free will defense. I mean, humans sinned and brought this evil in the world on themselves. And not just the moral or personal evil of you know, human relationships, people being envious or killing each other, things like that, but also natural evil. Now, I think within a, within a classical Christian conception, that made sense because the people would read Genesis, they read it as, uh, took it very literally, where God created the world in a short space of time, and then humans were put in this perfect environment, they rebelled against God, they sinned, and then there was a curse that fell. And the curse fell, in a sense, as a, uh, as a, in part as a teaching tool to teach humanity of just the gravity of their sin and help and serve as a way of coming back. But the point is, I mean, what, what gave, I think, this theodicy teeth was that humans, in a sense, were responsible for the evils they were experiencing. 
Now, the, that becomes a problem, though, with the rise of modern science and then with our understanding of the world being much older and you know, with not just a few days predating humans, but a few billion years predating humans. And so what does that history that predates humans show? Well, it's a whole history of uh, predation and you know, parasitism, death, extinction, you, know, you name it. I mean, so there's all this natural tooth evil. And claw. Red in tooth and claw. Uh, you know, or Darwin's battle for life. And so you know, how do you make sense of that? Because here you have humans that come after the fact how, how is it that uh, you, know, you don't seem to have that good old-fashioned theodicy where humans are responsible for the evil they're, they're experiencing? And so the, the, I, I've struggled with this as a, in trying to formulate a theodicy, and what I find is that even among some of the old Earth creationists, people who, who say, well, yes, the Earth is older, they try to make a distinction between natural evil and personal evil. Moral they'll evil. Say, uh, they'll say, well, natural evil... God's okay with it, you know, and at some level they'll say, you know, it's, it's not such a big deal. Well, you know, for me it is a big, big deal, and I, I can't just, couldn't just let it stand. So I thought about this problem for a number of years, and it struck me as a, as a Christian, you know, we take God's work of salvation of Christ on the cross as not only proleptic, looking into the future, but also retroactive, that, you know, the Old Testament saints were saved in virtue of Christ's sacrifice on the cross. Well, couldn't something like that hold, as this is how I thought to myself, for also the fall? You know, we think of the effects, uh, the old way of thinking of the effects of the fall is that the fall happens and then things go haywire. Well, couldn't it happen that the fall happens and in a sense God, who's outside of time, changes the past and introduces natural evil you know, for the sake of humanity to, to be a mirror of their, the, the fall. You know, and it seems to me that even our, our understanding of evil, uh, we understand evil by the evils we see in nature. I mean, could we fully appreciate evil if we didn't have examples of vipers and parasitism and things like that? I mean, you know, nature gives us wonderful metaphors for the evil in our hearts. So, so it's, what you're saying is that by the fall, which in your theology is a very important event was sin mm-hmm. entered the world in some yes. way so that that event was so pivotal that that God had to make that more uh, obvious or more poignant and so therefore when that happened because God is outside of time and time is all happening in the same moment so to speak to God that it would be not a problem to restructure what had what looks like the past to us, but to God is all the the uh, the, the omnipresent, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, uh, roughly. I mean, the thing is, I don't think that there was a perfect history, and then God changed it. I mean, I, I think there's 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 a plan that God had, and then you know the the effects yeah. ramified into the past. Now that but sounds like backward causation. Well, it, it, in some sense, it is. You know? <laughs> yeah, there, okay, there, yeah, people, I won't be embarrassed people, to criticize you, know, you for that yeah, I mean, if you accept it. Yeah, you know, it's a, in, a, in a sense it is, but it, it is God acting. But I would say, you know, you say, well, to make it more poignant. I mean, I think. The, the point is not just to, you know, I want you humans really to understand, you know, what, what you did, but uh, I, I think to, in a sense, it's respecting our, our, our freedom and what we, what we have done and that we really are the crown of creation and what we do has ramifications both at the personal level and in nature. You know? yeah. So, it's, uh, now, you know, the thing is, I'm saying this within my theological framework. I mean, sure. I think there are lots of perspectives which won't find that congenial, but, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make sense of a problem that really does weigh heavily on, I think, at least certain sectors of the Christian community and trying and, to make sense of intelligent design. And what I, I, I like about this, actually, is that you, you, you have a certain uh, uh, predisposed... Um, uh, assumptions that you, you, you want to keep. You want to keep mm-hmm. the fall. Mm-hmm. You want to keep a certain logical pro- progression, and you need a theodicy, and you're trying to harmonize things mm-hmm. that at least superficially look like they're incompatible, and then, and then deal with natural evil, which predates humans. Yeah. And, and not willing to dismiss natural evil as something that's not important. Right, and you know, and try to take into account the science, which certainly seems to show that we, we're dealing with yeah. billions and not thousands yeah. of years. Yeah, I mean, I mean, to me, that that is interesting. I, I, I can't say that it, 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 it's a view that you know I, I would subscribe to personally, uh, but but I do think it recognizes the, the lengths you have to go to harmonize some of these positions. Well, it's, you know, it's uh, but I mean, the, the problem of evil is that everybody. 
you know, I don't think it's easy for anybody. I mean, if there was some really <laughs> neat, pat uh, answer, you know, I don't think we'd be arguing about it. But it's 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 well, it's, the, a, the, it's a the, tough the, problem. The, the tough problem exists because you have God in there. Yeah. If you don't have God, the problem's pretty easy. Well, but then you have the problem of good that you've got to deal with. You know, I mean, it's uh, you know, you, you, I look at some of the evolutionists, and they have to explain away Mother Teresa and people like that. You know, it's uh, the, and try to treated in terms of evolutionary self-serving right, right. so you know you've got everybody's got problems <laughs> with it you know yeah.